All right. Go for it. Sorry. Go for it. Go for it. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Joe Code. I am your host, Joe Marisi. We are here. Very rare nighttime recording. Let's uh, let's party. Six thirty on a Thursday. Let's uh, maybe let's get after it here in the studio. What do you say, Aaron? You ready to crack a few? Uh, I mean, I have something that looks like a beer, <laughs> liquid death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got my uh, got my nice water here. No, we will not be. We will not be pounding tonight maybe another time maybe when we get to joe code episode 100 maybe uh have a few maybe have all the guys on chad jt strider uh this is joe code episode 87 thanks a lot everyone for tuning in checking me out here joe code podcast i am joe code I am Joe Marisi. This is a this is a comedy podcast, so hopefully you laugh, have a good time. Maybe uh, maybe you learn something. You might just learn something here during uh, during this time while I'm talking. I've got a lot of good uh, people trust my insights on food, uh, beer, and men. Got a lot of good uh, got a lot of good insight. I would like to say in my 39 years, you know, I, uh, yeah, just feel like I, uh, you know, I've got, I've got my, my opinions formulated. I mean, they're always changing, but we do, uh, we do a healthy amount of good food talk here. And, uh, yeah, Thursday night, Aaron, no softball tonight, huh? No, which is good. We need a little bit of a reset. All right, because we're uh, we're scuffling a little bit without you. Well, hey man, I am. Uh, I'll be ready for the spring season. I just, uh, I just, I'm not physically into it right now. I just, I hold myself up to a certain standard of uh, physical fitness. And so, I no don't. softball right now. And I know it's softball. Like, you don't need to be in great shape. Okay, there's guys that have big bellies and are just uh, rumbling around the field. But you know what? That's not me. Okay, there's. Uh, I know that there's bats where guys can just swing with their stomach. They don't even need their arms. <laughs> okay, I know that you don't have to be in great shape. But for me, it's not... I don't feel good if I'm not in proper playing shape. I can't I don't know how those old guys do it where they're just like yeah, it doesn't seem like they stretch. They don't uh they're not that smooth, but for whatever reason they just get hits all the time. Yeah. Uh they run without pulling muscles. I I, I don't get it. Hopefully I could be one of those guys. I feel like they're smothered in uh, Icy Hot or uh, they're on medications. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they just bathe in the Icy Hot before they hit the field. Yeah, they might because I don't know. I don't know how they do it, but good for them. It's good that they do it. And, yeah, I'll, I'll be out there in the spring. Just need to get out there, get in shape. I've been hiking every day, getting in shape. With all the rain that we've had here, the the hills now are green. Mm -hmm. You go hiking and you see green. I never saw that before here in Los Angeles. You always just see brown and dirt. Now you see green. It's like you're in the, you know, you're in the hills in another state, but this is California. Looks beautiful. So, yeah, getting in shape. Got myself a nice haircut. I'm giving it. You know, we're uh, we're giving it like another month. I'm I'm gonna see. I I haven't decided. I might go back to buzzing. They keep blowing smoke up my ass at supercuts, <laughs> telling me they think that. <laughs> 
I don't know. They, they're like, yeah, just keep it at medium length. The lady's like, you're going to give it another month. It's going to fill in more. You know, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if I like the way it looks or not. I, I initially did. There's like some wax you can put in. But now I'm having my doubts. I'll, I'll give it till mid-March. And if I get another haircut and I'm not quite sold on what's happening, the weather will probably warm up by then. I'm just going to say, that's it. Let's buzz it. Let's buzz this, baby. But for now, beard, hair, cold weather, we're... Uh, we're keeping it. I'm going to keep it for now. I Because I, the way it looks from the front is good. And just as long as you're not, like, really tall and you're not staring down at the top of my head, we're good. Of course, anyone who's, like, 6'6 six, six and above might be like, Hey, Joe, what, what's going on up there? What are you doing? Uh, okay, giant, get off my back. All right, don't worry about it. Just because people can't see the top of your head, Mr. Six Foot Six. Also, $29 for a haircut at Supercuts. Is that pretty reasonable nowadays? No, it's gone up. It used to be like 23 24 Yeah, I mean, I guess they got to keep up with the uh, inflating cost of scissors. <laughs> the scissors keep going up. So we they got to increase the haircut. The clippers... I mean, those those clippers, you, we're not getting them cheap anymore. The different uh, the different settings, the number two, man, the in, the inflating cost of the number two blade. It's the blue juice. Yeah. The oh blue yeah, the juice blue juice. What do they call that stuff? Uh, disinfectant. I yeah. Think. This yeah, the little jar of the blue stuff that you always see on the side. Yeah. I mean. I don't know. Well, for these other places around here, I feel like $29. There's some places you just... Men's haircuts, like 50 bucks. Yeah. Like 39 40 and then you got a tip on top of that. Yeah. Like nice. yesterday, I got a $29 cut. Tip 7 bucks. I, I feel like that's good, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Totally. A little good. That's a good little tip. Yeah, yeah. I used to pay like 8 bucks. At a place around the corner from me. Like, re not too far in the past? Yeah, yeah, when I lived here in Burbank. Like, yeah, there uh, was, uh, yeah. well, yeah, I remember growing up, there'd be Bo Ricks. Yeah, it'd be like $8 haircuts. Fantastic Sam's was always cheap. Maybe that was like 12 or something. But yeah, haircuts, yeah, used to be really cheap. But now... Yeah, 29 And then on Tuesday, it's super cuts. They do a deal where it's, it's only 26 So Tuesday's packed. People are looking for that $3 deal. Wow. Yeah, this time I went on Wednesday. The place was empty. Everyone, uh, that $3, big thing. People are looking for that extra 3 bucks a month with the haircut. Save you that $36 for the year. Make sure we pack the place on uh, Tuesday, Tuesday Cuts Day, you know. So, uh, what else are we doing? We're shaping up the studio. Uh, I'm doing laundry now, and I some of these buildings, I don't get it. I, I don't get the, the washing machines. I was taking my laundry out when I was staying with my friend Ari because there was no laundry in the building. Uh, this building that I'm in, uh, this is going to be my first, uh, this will be my, this sucks for this week. This sucks for this week is shallow washing machines. Okay, I need to wash more, you know, I need to wash, can I get enough clothes in the machine for the week? Okay, I put like three sweatshirts in there, like two pairs of pants, and then the tub is like full already. Okay, and then... You put, you start the cycle, and then the water fills up, and then I open it, and I see, like, 
stuff floating on top that's not even wet? What's with the shallow washing machines at these places, okay? I need deep washing machines. I need to wash a lot of clothes, all right? Now I have to take my laundry out because I, I can't... I can't spend my whole life doing laundry. I don't get it with the shallow washing machine, okay? It's not good. Aaron, what's your washing machine situation? Do we have one in the unit? Well, yeah, in my house, yeah. Okay, he has, Aaron has a house, so he has the proper machinery. Yeah. I am in a... Big stuff. Apartment complex where there's 40 or 50 units and only two washers and two dryers first of all bad oh, ratio yeah that's a terrible ratio i mean we should be talking like five washers five dryers maybe even six or seven yeah i had a four and four in my last place and it was still always people's shit left around yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I had, uh, so the last place I lived when I was living back with JT, that place was only a six unit building. And then that place had two washers, two dryers. And this one's got like 40 or 50 and we're talking two and two. I don't know. Not, not too yeah. promising on the, on the laundry front. Gonna have to take my business elsewhere. I don't care if I could do my laundry from an app. Okay? Oh, yeah, download the app. You don't need quarters. Oh, yeah, well, you know what? I also can't get to... I can't get to a machine. Yeah. Okay? I, I don't... I don't... I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do laundry at uh, 4 in the morning yeah, when yeah. it's uh, the only time that it's free. Because then you always go in there, and then someone leaves their clothes in the dryer, and and then you got to get into that whole game of oh, do I take their clothes out? I mean, I've been a I've been a clothes taker outer. I'll move your shit along, like. Well, when I lived in a house, like I rented a room in a house when I first moved to LA. Yeah. Uh, I would move I would move people's clothes along, like, oh, you're in the washer, I'll move you into the dryer. Dryer oh, stuff. you'll put them in the dryer for them? Yeah, and start it. <laughs> I like, yeah, act, yes. But, Help yeah. them along with the process. Maybe they don't know what's next. Obviously not with uh, in an apartment complex where you're paying for it. It's like, no, obviously you're just getting put on top of the washer. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's rough. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why I think I just... I, I feel like I'll, I'll just pay for the fluff and fold service. Just avoids that. You just drop the clothes off. You come get them a day or two later. Yeah. Uh, don't have to. It's like, yeah, it's more money, but you know what? I'm working more. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll save that money with like what I would have spent like going out. I don't. Yeah. You know, I don't go out much these days, so it's like, all right, I'll just I'll get laundry done instead. Your, your life will be better. You'll feel better. That's worth the money. Yeah, this laundry room, uh, these laundry room escapades. Yeah, we don't have time. You know, we got we got to keep things going. And it is an older building, which I, I have no problem with. But like the heater in my place, because there's just heat. It's like there's just one temperature. It's just fire. Oh shit. There's no. <laughs> there's no. Like you just turn it on. They like there's. There's like three different knobs on the heater. They told me, oh, just touch, just oh, the only one you're going to worry about is the green knob. And that like has the numbers of like, there's low and then it's one through 10 and then high. And then, yeah, just I, I'll put it on at like five if it's cold at night and it's just fire coming out. So, yeah, the place heats up quick, we'll say. Yeah, there's no... There's no controlling the heat. There's no, uh, oh, you want to put it on at 69, 70, 71? No, it's just uh, flames or no flames. Okay, it's just immediate heat. Yeah, it's basically uh, a fireplace. Are you paying for that gas? Oh, yeah. 
uh, just a heads up, gas is really expensive right now. Yeah, that's what I heard. Um, yeah, I almost want to like turn the pilot light off, but for now, I guess I need it on because it's like one of those things too where there's always there's always like a little heat coming out. Like, like even if it's all the way low, like I don't know if it's like ever off or not. I'm trying to see what I should do, should do with my jacket. No, I guess I'll leave this up. But yeah, I don't know. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see when the bill comes. Yeah, because I heard there's like insane. Yeah, we're completely being gouged. It's it's terrible. It's uh, the governor's getting involved. It's. My bill went from like 30, you know, in the non using the heat months, it's like 20, 30 bucks. It was $260 um, this last one. Okay, but, yeah. I mean, that's, that's obviously using the heat a lot. But still. Yeah, it's still a lot. Jeez. Well, yeah, and then a studio too. So like my shower, the the window is in my shower practically like. Because you need a little air when you're showering. You like the bathroom window open to let the steam out. Mm -hmm. but like, the, the, like I'm in the shower, the window's like right here. So when it's cold out, it's tough because it's like I'm getting that cold breeze, hot water. Like, I don't know. I need, I need, because I'm, I'm a hot shower guy. I'm not one of these freaks that takes cold showers. No. I know people are all about it. Oh, take a cold shower. It wakes you up. No, I want it hot. Okay, I like to relax. I like the soothing hot water. I don't need... Yeah, I've never done, like, these ice bath things. Yeah, I don't like cold. I, I'm too cold. I get, fr I get freezing out here. I don't care. Call me a pussy. I'm cold in L.A., Last night, the wind, I was working outside the comedy store. I had low socks on. Oh. The wind was blowing, and I and it was rolling up my pants. I was freezing. The wind was cutting through my pants. I had, like, dockers on. I should have worn, like, more of my, uh, like, black jeans, but I don't care. I'm Still, freezing. It's howling through those things. Yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, liking the place, the liking being able to walk to work. Which is my uh, actually my Joe code for this week, and uh, if ever you can do it, walk to work. I gotta tell you the the stress relief that that is, because all of us we we put up with a commute probably for a lot of our lives, where we're driving to work and we're spending time in traffic and we're getting pissed off and. People are cutting us off, and it's like, oh, this sucks. I'm in traffic for a half hour, an hour. If you get the chance to walk to work, do it. If you can live in a place close to work, do it. I got to tell you, it's a relief. I walk to work every day, and it's just it's a beautiful thing. Just one less thing to worry about. Walking to work, a quick little 15-minute stroll for me. Just, it's beautiful. Makes life easier. And uh, just, it's great. It really is. Just a wonderful thing to have in your life. Walking to work. I mean, just being able to walk to food and different restaurants. It's all just really nice, you know. So, really pumped on exercising, going to work, you know, getting my steps in. It's all it's all good, all good stuff. Um, would you ever live in New York? Um, no, not really. I mean, I would go back to Chicago before I went to New York. I think. I mean, in terms of walkability and. Yeah, New York. Yeah, you'd probably probably there. A lot of people are able to walk to work. I would assume. Yeah. If you're all uh, living and working like in uh, downtown Manhattan. Yeah, I would think a lot of people there do that. Oh, yeah, people... Uh, so I was talking with the Academy of Chad video that I did. Uh, I hope people have checked that out. That was a lot of fun doing that. Well, I as as of now, it's like a little over a 1,000 views. 
on YouTube. Hopefully we get that up. It was uh, Academy of Chad, like how to be a best friend, where Chad was helping me cope with the news of finding out that I was actually 100% French. That was the... <laughs> That was the whole thing. <laughs> I I am not Italian. In the sketch, uh, I, I find I find out after a twenty three and me that I am in fact one hundred percent French, and then Chad proceeds to take me to get a French makeover. Uh, we have a little French themed party where we have a Joan Rivers impersonator come by. Uh, we sing some karaoke, you know, there's a pinata, and then we go to Hooters to top it off. We went down to Hooters. All the way in, uh, it's all the way in Southgate. Yeah, they aren't close anymore. Yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no more close. The one in Burbank's gone. Hollywood Boulevard's gone. I guess there's only like eight Hooters left in the state of California. So, kind of a bummer. Hooters, good times. I always liked their food. I thought the food's good. Cool bar, like the one on Hollywood Boulevard used to have comedy shows. Mm -hmm. Used to do comedy up there in that room. Good times. So, yeah, no more Hooters. But yeah, Academy of Chad, the one starring me. I, I mean, wearing a... A cool red Adidas shirt. They got a nice French beret I'm wearing. We actually got to do... Uh, we went on the radio at K-Rock. We were uh, we were uh, live on the morning radio show. With... Um, I wish I wasn't forgetting their names. Allie and somebody. Klein or something? Yeah, I think that sounds right. Yeah, Allie and, yeah, I don't want to mess it up. But, yeah, the morning show. We were live, <laughs> yeah, and people were, were like, calling in and writing in and just uh, going along with the whole uh, me being French story. So that was, that was a good time. Yeah, it was a lot of fun being on the radio. That was cool. I would love to do that. It's a lot like this. It's basically the same frickin' thing. <laughs> uh, the hours might not be as good. Well, yeah, the hours with that, I, th I think you probably, if you're in the morning show, you probably got to get there like 5 a.m. So, but yeah, that was fun, going to K-Rock and being on the radio. I like that. And they got those big microphones that like stand straight up. Which is which is is weird, huh. you know. But uh, but yeah, good times. And uh, yeah, that was good. All right, we uh, let's see, we're we're gonna get into. I know we got a lot of email holdovers, a lot of comment holdovers. Just gotta do uh, a few more, uh, a few more things here. And, uh, oh yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> so when I was back home in Chicago, I, re I, re I was reminded of this story that happened at a, at a bar many years ago in Edison Park. A bit of, a bit of a funny tale, if you will. So there was a night, this has got to be. I mean, man, probably close to like 15 years ago. Me, my friend Joe, and my other friend Yobbs, we all went out uh, to a bar in Edison Park. It was called Nick's Pub back in the day. Uh, Nick's Pub. It's no longer there. There's now a bar called Firewater Saloon where Nick's Pub was. But uh, So this night at Nick's Pub, I... I had to go to the bathroom. I had to take a shit. So sometimes you're out at the bar and you have to shit. Not a big deal. It'll happen. And 
I go in there to take a shit, and then my friends Joe and Yobbs come in. Oh. They come into the bathroom, and then uh, oh. they proceed to grab some paper towels or toilet paper and light it on fire and throw it at my feet. Un uncool. Yes, uncool. You're, so this you're happened. You're still friends with these guys. What's that? You're still friends with these guys? Oh yeah. These are some of my best friends. Nah, I'm done. So <laughs> I mean, we were young, we were you know, they're playing a little prank at me. I mean, these guys were up to hijinks back in the day. Yeah, you just you can't you can't mess with my bathroom. <laughs> I couldn't go to the bathroom in high school because I would have to go to the nurse's office because of the shenanigans that people would do and and the lack of privacy. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah, I don't get the bathroom shenanigans. It's not for me like I get messing with people and busting each other's balls or whatever, but yeah, in the bathroom in those vulnerable situations Leave me alone. Let's let's keep this off limits. But yeah, so they do that. They run out of the bathroom. Then the the bartender slash manager, he might have been the owner even. He runs in and he's like, "Come on, get out of here! You got to get out of here!" And then he like, so I get out and then he kicks me out. He bounces you from the bathroom. Yeah, he's well. Yeah, he bounces me from the bathroom. He's like, he's like. Well, when you get out of there, you got to leave. Like, he kicked me out of the bar. Jeez. Not my friends. He said, you got to go. Huh. And, I, yeah, I was the one in there. Like, what, is he, what do you think? I was trying to keep warm by uh, lighting a fire by my feet. I got a little chilly while I was sitting on the pot. No. I had idiots <laughs> throw stuff at me like I'm in there like a, what am I performing like a ritual in the in there with oh, the fire no I'm not no no I had friends who are immature and they're like laughing and then we all leave because it's like oh yeah no I'm not just getting kicked out you guys are the idiots that did that so yeah we were done from Nick's for the night but yeah, a, uh, a, a classic story that sticks with me. Yeah, it's uh, that hasn't happened to me since. That was only the one time where I've been uh, on the on the toilet, and then toilet paper came in on fire. Uh, I don't remember. I don't uh, condone doing that to anybody. Leave, like Aaron said, the bathroom is a that's a precious time. That's a private time. Leave it's, each other alone. It's already a terrible experience. You've you or you have to go. You're committing. Yeah, I gotta go. It's a pub bathroom. Yes, it's probably not great. It wasn't great. And then you're gonna mess with me. Fuck that. Yeah, the conditions weren't great to begin with. No, it's not like I wanted to be doing that. I didn't have much of a choice. It just happened. Sometimes you just gotta go. So, next time I bring a pool cue with me. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they did have pool tables there. So, yeah, next time I'm bringing the cue in, I'll bring the bridge. So then maybe I could <laughs> get your nose if I have to. So, yeah, fun fun times back in the day in good old uh good old Edison Park with the boys. Uh, all right, we'll do a, let me do a This Is Great, and then we'll get to, uh, we'll get to our emails here for the week, and then we'll get into the, uh, get into the comments. So, all right, here we go. This Is Great is, uh, the chicken Milanesa sandwich that I had today. From uh, one of my favorite delis in Los Angeles, Potato Chip Deli. The Chicken Milanesa is a breaded chicken sandwich uh, that comes with a spicy aioli, lettuce, tomato, and Swiss cheese. Anytime I can have Swiss cheese, man, I love Swiss cheese. One of my favorite cheeses ever that you don't see too often. You don't see it enough. I love me some Swiss cheese. 
love me and and they make uh they bake it in-house the ciabatta bread artisan ciabatta bread at potato chip the beautiful breaded chicken delicious sandwich this is great chicken milanese sandwich all right here we go uh email the joe code podcast at joe code podcast at gmail.com also don't forget you could book me on cameo uh just search my name you'll see my photo with the joe code logo always have fun doing cameos and then uh if you can join the patreon for two dollars a month at uh join the patreon for two dollars a month at patreon.com slash joe code podcast and please uh subscribe to the youtube channel i forgot to say that up top but please subscribe to the youtube channel getting close to 1100 subscribers now just click that subscribe button log in uh make an account if you need to on youtube and just subscribe it's a free subscribe thing just press that little button and we will be all good all right got some emails here to get to now and i left my place here all right give me one second emails there we go yeah that was the austin one uh, oh yeah no i did do this one yeah okay ross yeah we did talk about being a wingman yep. and leftovers okay that was that was that one all right here we go All right, this one is from Joe Kim. Hey, Joe, what up? You should definitely try cooking at home. It's an excellent time, and you could have a cooking beer while you do it, which is one of the best kinds of beers. A pasta is an apt dish to start with. Love in the pod. Would love to hear about some childhood sports heroics, if you had any. Best, Joe Kim. Yeah, I mean, that'd be fun, having a cooking, having a little beer while you do it. I, I could see that. I like, yeah, I like seeing guys, uh, I'll see guys grilling, having beers. Yeah, it looks like a good time. All right, that's a little motivating factor to, yeah, I've never experienced what the cooking beer is like. It sounds like a very satisfying, refreshing one. All right, Joe Kim, all right. And, uh, oh, yeah, some childhood sports heroics. If you had, yeah, I mean, I, I was a good athlete. I, baseball always made the all star team in baseball, always had, uh, scored a bunch of touchdowns as a child. Um, won a championship in baseball as a teenager, like 14, 15 years old. Um, was on some Pop Warner football teams that won, like, regional championships. Went to... Played at Northern Illinois University for a regional championship. Won that. Would have went to nationals, but at that time, they only selected, like, one team to go. So it wasn't like everyone went if you won. It was... I don't know. It's hard to explain, but... Because there was four different divisions... So they only took one to go. I don't know. It's stupid, but um, all right. But anyways, yeah, I was a good athlete, and even high school, my uh, junior year, scored a game-winning overtime touchdown against a team that made it to the state quarterfinals. So that was fun. Um, yeah, good times. Good athletic prowess was shown. Uh, all right, here's from uh, David. Hello, Joe Beans. Glad to hear other people on the sour cream on pancakes train. Oh, here we go. I mean, these guys, circling back to it, something sweet like strawberry jam, raspberry jam, jalapeno jam, or syrup goes great with the sour cream. Think of it like a sweet and sour sauce for chicken nuggets. At least give it a try before you shoot, shoot it down. Worst thing that could happen is you don't like it and never try to again. 
Speaking of, what is one food you've tried but will never try again? Sincerely, David. Um, all right, the sour cream. Yeah, okay, the sour cream on pancakes, I'm more tempted to try than the sour cream on pasta, as we talked about last week. So, okay, fine. I'm not going to knock it. Now, the more we talk about it, I'm getting more tempted. Uh, one food... I'll never try again. It's probably beets. I've tried to like beets too many times, and I think I'm done with it. Uh, I don't, Aaron, you have a food like that where you want something you won't try again? Uh, probably a lot of them. I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of uh, anything specific. There's a lot of things I don't like. All right. Those things I can't eat anymore, unfortunately. All right, here we go. Here's one from Tom. Uh, Big T writing in again. Who would be the man you would want to eat food and drink beer with? Dead or alive, trying to hit all the topics in one queue. Keep that hog up, son. Uh, I mean, it, for me, it's always it's always my dad. I always love getting a good meal with my dad, having a beer. That's, uh, that's yeah, that's my number one, Tom. Um, all right, here we go. Ross, Joe, you may not like this tip since you're not into sours, but to make any beer taste like a sour, add a shot of grapefruit juice to it. It's my go-to when I want to change from a classic Miller Lite, and I'm not wanting to get too adventurous. Congrats on the move, Ross. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really into sour beers, um, but if you add a shot of grapefruit juice to a Miller Lite, yeah, I don't know. That could be tempting because it's not... I mean, I wonder if that even makes it sour or more of like an IPA. But yeah, I, man, people just come up with these concoctions. You guys are you guys are an interesting group. I'll say that. All right, here's one from Michael. Hey Joe, follow up question: Who is your favorite character from the show? Everybody loves Raymond, and why? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mine is Robert, Frank, Ray, Deborah, Marie, Amy, Michael, Jeffrey, Allie, Peter, and Miss Puss. Isn't that like all the characters? It's got to be in order or something. Um, oh, yeah, maybe. Also, shout out my boy Matt, the Sky God 2000, teabagging legend and robe god of Twitch. Uh, yeah, I guess he means in that order. Yeah, I mean, I, the parents were always really funny in that show. So I guess Frank and Marie, I'll say, were my favorite characters. I think Robert was my favorite. Yeah, yeah Robert was great, too. I remember my mom would laugh so hard at Robert. Yeah. By the way, I've been thinking about this uh, meal and a beer thing. Uh, I don't really care for the beer, but if I could have a meal with somebody. I was just watching Point Break again last night. Yeah. And I saw JT was watching it today. Which oh, yeah, hilarious. I saw that. Um, but fucking Patrick Swayze, dude. That dude, that movie should not be good. But he is so good. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he is so convincing as that guy. <laughs> which he's not. I mean, he's from Texas. He's not a surfer. Yeah, he's cool, man. But man, he makes it look fun. And man, he 100% committed. And, and you believe he's that dude. It's So Patrick Swayze is my guy. Sweet. And I heard he was a great guy. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Swayze. Yeah, I bet he was cool. All right, here's one from Connor. He, uh, oh yeah, he, he sends a follow-up to the place that he worked at saying there was a barbecue sauce that had a ranch and barbecue sauce mix for the onion rings. Mm -hmm. And he followed that up with saying... Connor, what did you say? The restaurant is Shane's Rib Shack. It's a franchise with stores in the South. I don't think the sauce is available for purchase, but but it was called Q Ranch. 
If you're ever in the southeast, you should do a Joe Eats for it. Okay. Q Ranch. I wonder what that's all about. What does that even mean? The Q. What would that stand for? Oh, bar like, oh barbecue. Barbecue, barbecue ranch. ranch. Q Ranch, yeah. See, I, give me a minute and I'll figure things out. All right, this is a sp another spam email. Okay. <laughs> Let's read that. Here we go. Dylan. The Breakfast Burrito Dilemma from Dylan. Hey, Joe and Aaron, long listener of the pod. Can you please rate the top five L.A. breakfast burritos from one being the best and five last? There's many factories that come into play. I think he means factors. Mm -hmm. The type of potatoes included, choice of meat, if they add avocado or some sort of sauce, etc., my personal top three are as follows. Number one, Great White. Number two, Wake and Late. Number three, Erewhon. P.S. Thanks for posting the podcast and time for me to listen during my Monday morning lunch breaks. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, three is probably more. I don't even know if I know five. But for me, yeah, number one is Erewhon. Number two would be uh, Koufax. And then number three, what was the one place I had? I, I believe it's Salt's Cure. That sounds it, right. Yeah, is That's number right. three. But yeah, after that, I don't think I've had much more. I'm trying to think. I don't know, Aaron, what do you got on that? You got some options, I think. Yeah, that. yeah. I mean, I've spoken about Norm's. Right, uh, Norm's. Norm's is a good, good breakfast burrito, good size, good, great mouthfeel. Just they mash everything up. It's great. Great as a mouthfeel. I like that. Um, Alfredo's 2, which is across the freeway here on the 5. Uh, that's a San Diego-style Mexican place. They have great breakfast burritos there. Um, you're going to get a little more... Um, Maybe greasy there, but it's it's really fucking good. Um, and people rave about Corner Cottage here uh, in Burbank, um, so definitely go there. I, I haven't personally, but everybody I have ever worked with said you got to go there. Corner Cottage, okay. Corner Cottage, yeah. All right, cool. Crave yeah. Cafe's got a good one too. Who's Crave Cafe? Crave. Oh yeah, because Crave. Yeah, there was the Crave closer to me, and then they closed up. But, yeah, I don't think I ever had the breakfast burrito there. I like mm -hmm. Crave. All right, let me do this one. I believe this is the last email, and then we'll go to a, a special guest caller, actually, on this email. I think this is a good one to uh, get, a, get his input. So this is from uh, Eli. Sup, Joe? I am in med school right now. And your pod gives me the gas to get going every Monday morning before long hours in the books. I just wanted to spread the word that the best way to get a pizza from Lou Malnati's is to get the crust well done, but with sour cream spread on top. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Truly a game changer. Thanks for all you do. Now that's got to be a guy messing with me. Eli. I mean, sour cream and tomato flavors go really well together for me, but I'm not getting sour cream on a pizza. I mean, this has got to be a joke. I think he's playing along with the theme of, you know, the sour cream stuff getting absurd. <laughs> you know, because there's no way he's, there's no way that's for real. But if it is, Eli... You you better watch out, pal, because don't write in here again with that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing they're going to be like, uh, if it's really warm out, you put a little sour cream in your hat. You put it on your head. No. Yeah. All right. So right now, guys, we're going to call uh, we're going to call my dad. OK, we're going to actually we're going to talk about not about the the Lumal Nadis, but we're going to talk about um Maybe my dad could give me, because people keep telling me that I need to cook. So maybe my dad can give me a little uh, pep talk uh, about cooking. Because I know that he, since my mom passed, my dad has really become quite the cook. And he really happens to enjoy it. 
So uh, we're going to call him right now. Aaron, I just plugged this into the phone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're going to call my dad and see uh, what he thinks, if he thinks I should cook and, like, what maybe recipes uh, I should try. So uh, we're going to call my dad right now. Hey, Joe. Yeah, hey, Dad. Uh, we're uh, we're uh, you're on Joe Code right now. We're recording the podcast. Oh, awesome! Say hi to Aaron. Hey, Aaron. How hey. are you? Hey, Mr. Marisi. Uh, so, Dad, keep people keep writing in and telling me telling me that I need to start cooking and that I need to have like some basic recipes and stuff. What, what do you think about that nonsense? Well, you should cook. I keep telling you to save money. You go out to eat every night, which is ridiculous. Well, it's not like I'm going to steakhouses. Doesn't matter. It all adds up every night. Does not. Well, and then when you were used to shop, and I don't know if you still do at Whole Foods, it's ridiculous. Okay. Well, I I don't go there that often, and I don't really go to Erlon much anymore. But yeah, no, I'll I'll start buying cheap. But I, I mean, like, what what I mean, what do you think I could even make? I don't even know what I would cook. Anything. All you got to do is search on YouTube and you follow the procedure. I I didn't cook anything for forty years. Yeah, I know. And now all of a sudden, I can make stuff. Yeah, all of a sudden, out of nowhere. Well, it's easy. You go and you go on YouTube. You type in whatever you want to make. And then a bunch of chefs pop up. You watch them, and you see which one you want to follow. All right. Yeah, fair enough. I, I told you that one guy that's the best is that Chef John with food wishes. There hasn't been one recipe that I've done of his that's been bad. Okay. All right. Well, sounds great, Dad. Yeah, I just want to see what you thought about the cooking, and, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll get into it someday. Save money. Here, I lost you for a second. What was that? I said, that's how you save money. You can't keep out eating all the time. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Sounds great, Dad. All right. Well, uh... What do you think about putting sour cream in everything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dad, people keep saying they put they put sour cream on pasta. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, come on. And on pancakes. I mean, pancakes. People... These people are nuts. Yeah, that's what we're saying I mean, over here. What the heck's going on? No, they're they're crazy. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, I don't know who where. Who puts sour? Who, who mixes sour cream with with uh, with pasta? I think sauce? it's like a European thing or something. Well, it ain't American or Italian, that's for sure. Yeah, we're Italian, man. I mean, sour cream. Forget <laughs> it. You put it on baked potato and nachos. That's it. Yeah. Other than that, that's the only use for it. That's what I'm talking about, Dad. All right. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dad. Good input. All right. Uh, no problem. Aaron, thanks for everything you're doing for Joe. Oh, of I course. I appreciate it. Yeah. We All right, Dad. Have a great night. Love you. All right. You too. Love you. All right. Love Bye. you. Bye. Bye. All right, cool. <laughs> that was uh, my dad. Yeah, I wanted to. I had talked to him on the way here to doing the podcast, and uh, yeah, we were talking about. He's like, you know, he's like, you could call me on uh, the podcast sometimes. So uh, yeah, I'm glad. Uh, glad to get him on, and glad we I could uh, think of a way for him to uh, add some input to the show. So. Yeah, that was fun. Good to hear from Dad. Um, all right, cool. Well, uh, Aaron, what? Did, uh, let's go to some comments here. And you heard Joe's dad, Sour Cream Boys. Yeah, that's right, guys. Take that. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Uh, from last last time, we still have uh, Stormotron. It says, hey, Joe and Aaron, longtime listener, all the way from the UK. Uh, I have to weigh on on. I have to weigh in on this because I audibly gasped at my TV. When you personally offended not only myself, but everyone living on this godforsaken island. Worcestershire sauce is amazing. It's the perfect condiment to splash on a cheese toasty, grilled cheese for you Americans. And a few teaspoons of the stuff goes great in a stew, adding a lovely savory tang to the dish. I personally like to drink it out of the bottle, but I don't recommend that to any normal person. 
As the highly regarded expert on studies of food, beer, and men, it is important to use this platform responsibly. Therefore, I implore you to retract such an unsubstantiated statement. I listen to all your pods when I'm working at home. It gets me through the day. Thanks for keeping me entertained. Yours sincerely, Stormotron. Stormotron? Stormotron. Okay, Stormotron. Yeah, all right. I'll Worc- Worcester sauce on grilled cheese? All right. Or a little cheese toasty, as you call it? Is that what he calls it? Yeah, cheese toasty. I like that name. I do like it. I like that better than grilled cheese, actually. I want a cheese toasty. Mm-hmm. I like that. All right, fine. And then I feel like, yeah, in stew, I could see that. I, I mean, I remember my mom putting that in stuff, and stew sounds familiar. So, all right, yeah, I guess I just was down on Worcester because I, I just don't find uh, many uses for it. But yeah. now I want to splash that on a cheese toasty and see what you're talking about. All right, yeah, fine. I, re- I retract my, my statement. I'll, I'll I'll give Worcester some love right here. Just because you said cheese toasty also, that sure. warms my heart. Yeah. Uh, Luke's 3748 says, Hey, Joe and Aaron, I was wondering if you guys would rank your top 10 holidays. Thanks. Top 10? I know. Are there 10? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are there 10? I mean... Okay, uh, uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, Halloween, Easter, and that's it, man. I don't, (laughs) I mean, those are the ones that I've celebrated. I don't know. In, In my life, those are the ones. I mean, are we talking Memorial Day? Fourth, okay, Fourth of July. Um, yeah, yeah, Memorial Day, Labor Day. Yeah, Saint there's Patty, not St. Patty's Day. What is it? St. Patty's Day. Oh yeah, Saint. Oh man, Cinco de Mayo. I guess there are ten. Okay, yeah. I mean, there are some good ones there. All right. Okay. All right. I'm gonna say Christmas, Thanksgiving. Fourth of July, St. Patrick's Day, um, and then I'll say Easter, Halloween. I'm not a big Halloween guy. And then I'll go with uh, Memorial Day, Labor Day. Uh, okay, President's Day. I mean, I mean, where where are we going with all the rest of them? <laughs> flag Day. Yeah, Flag Day. Uh, okay, whatever that come. Yeah. Earth Day. Yeah, Earth. Okay, yeah, Earth Day. <laughs> I'll put Earth Day in the top ten. Celebrate the Earth. And uh, yeah. Uh, all right, I go Halloween one, Christmas two, Fourth of July. New Year's Eve. Okay, New Year's. Then Thanksgiving. Uh, probably do Labor Day, Memorial Day. And I put, I'm putting Easter in the top ten only because I met my wife on Easter. Oh, nice. But other than that, I have no need for it. Um, yeah, that's as far as I'm going. Yeah, that's... But yeah, New yeah, I guess New Year's can be up there. But I'm not a big New Year's Eve guy. I... I'm more of a New Year's Day guy. Well, I always get excited for it, even if I don't have plans. I just always feel like uh, something special that day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jess Russo Vlogs says, um, it took me a while to finish this app. She's talking t- about uh, 84. Uh, but I heard you read my birthday comment. You guys are 100% correct that I seriously love sandwiches. She was the lunch. She would choose lunch as her uh, only uh, food source. Oh, okay. Uh, also, chicken fingers and french fries she loves. Yeah, those can pass for lunch. 
Sure. I'll give you that. Uh, our buddy Drew Pinnell says you should sell merchandise with the words go for it on it. Uh, I believe that would be my trademark. Yeah, that's Aaron. <laughs> I say it on a lot of shows, actually. Um, so uh, you're going to have to sign a licensing deal with me. <laughs> yeah, that's Aaron's. Uh, Drew says, uh, Drew also comments, this podcast is going to the moon soon. I have a hunch. And Brandon Tyler says, I put I put all the money my wife took on that bet. He says I'd put, I'd put what? All the money my wife took on that bet. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Carter Copeland says, uh, is there a pick of the long flowing hair phase? To which Drew Pinnell says, maybe deep in Instagram. Could be wrong, though. Oh, yeah. For me, yeah, there is. If you go, yeah, if you go deep on my Instagram, yeah, you'll, uh, I, I know I've posted some throwback pics of me with long hair for sure. Just uh, scroll deep. Go scroll. Keep scrolling. You'll find it. Uh, Jess Russo vlogs again. This The way this pod starts with no music, it's so perfectly Joe. Yeah, I agree. Thanks, Jess. Uh, wow, this is funny. Sky Guy 2000. Joe, can I get a shout out for my boy Mike, a.k.a. Malone? Is that the guy who emailed? Because he also shouted out Sky God. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it could be. Uh, he's been a coder since day one, and he's a great man that loves food, beer, and beer, especially tuna, which I don't... Is that supposed to be a compliment? <laughs> I don't know. All right, shout out to Sky God. Uh, Mike, a.k.a. AK, Malone from Sky God. All right, Mike, yeah, Malone, shout out. Thanks a lot for being a coder, being a fan. Shout out, Mike. Way to go, Malone, buddy. Uh, let's see. I I B W M S two 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 eight says Joe. I haven't commented before, but I have been following you since you first appeared on Chad and JT's pod. You got to make some merch, Joe. I think you could throw in some some of your codes on a piece of merch, like do stuff together or something like that. Uh, I would get some Joe code merch for sure. Keep killing it, Joe. Keep on growing, and I love watching you do your thing on this pod. Also, a pick em for you to do on the pod, mozzarella sticks in tossed in buffalo sauce or a home run. Um, yeah, merch will be coming down the line, that's for sure. Especially, I mean, here's the thing. If I, you know, I, I want to, if I start traveling more with comedy, that's, yeah, that's definitely a thing that I want to do uh, is have some merch. Um and yeah and then uh what else so i'm gonna i'm gonna choose a home run in that pick em. i think i'll get a lot more out of that home run feeling than i will the mozzarella's tossed in buffalo even though those are quite tempting and i bet are quite tasty i have not had them yet Okay, we got Lucas Durazio. Uh Joe, I'm glad you mentioned the differing plates at dinner. Uh, I refuse to order the same dish as anyone at the table, and I'm often persecuted for this stance. Uh, in my opinion, dining is a communal affair, and if I'm out to dinner with you, we're going to share a few bites of one another's meal. I am breaking bread with you. Share the wealth. Get the widest variety of tastes on the table as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I like different tastes. Yeah, and then if you want to share, it's uh, yeah you can you can share. It, that's why it's good to have variety. Everyone gets something different, and then it's like, hey, you know what? Can you cut me half of that? Let's let's go half and half here. Let's uh, let's divvy this up a little bit. Yeah, that's the way to go. Uh, Alan Swanky says, is it possible that the pancakes that are being referenced here are what? we would call potato pancakes. Those are really good with sour cream and applesauce or jam. Like latkes, basically. Yeah. I remember having, good call, Al, I remember having potato pancakes years ago. My mom would make them a little bit here and there. I haven't had potato pancakes in years, but yes, on those, you would do sour cream. and That was really good. 
but yeah. not like buttermilk yeah. pancakes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that could be what's being referenced here. I wonder if that is what's happening. I don't know. It'd be pretty silly to not mention their their potato pancakes. But I don't know. Yeah, because I, I think uh, they were mentioning uh, with syrup too. So I, I think they were talking about regular pancakes. Yeah. But yeah, potato pancakes with sour cream are great. Uh, Anthony Gomez says, "I freaking love this pod, man." Um, well, thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, Danny L. Uh, says, can't wait for the Chad Academy ep. The little Instagram sni snippet looked funny. Yeah, it was fun. Check it out on the Academy of Chad YouTube page, or you can just find it from the Academy of Chad Instagram also. Uh, Danny also says, hey, Joe, Super Bowl is coming up, so I hope you see this comment before shooting the next ep. Who do you got winning? Also... Philly cheesesteak or brisket burnt ends. Apparently, Kansas City is known for that. Uh, I got the Chiefs winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we missed that comment before the Super Bowl. Um, yeah. yeah, burnt ends. I feel like Kansas City is known for barbecue in general. Yeah. Not, not just burnt ends, but. I mean, I'll take barbecue, I guess, over a Philly cheesesteak. I'm going the other way. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm thinking about it as I'm saying it. I do love a great Philly cheesesteak. This one's tough. Yeah, I'll take a Philly cheesesteak because he said just burnt ends, right? Yeah. So I'll take the Philly cheesesteak over the burnt ends because if it was something different with barbecue, maybe I would lean to the KC barbecue. But yeah, I'll go Philly cheesesteak over burnt ends. Uh, Brandon Tyler uh, says, my apologies to fellow coders. I will not be able to timestamp until March. Hey, Brandon, no problem, buddy. I hope everything's uh, everything's good, man. Yeah, you're doing the Lord's work. Um, let's see. Galen Finley says, Joe, can we get an update on the new place? How are you settling in? Us coders need to know. Love the pod. I feel like we got that already. Oh, yeah, yeah. I gave a little update. Yeah, just getting settled in. Just need a... Ordering a dresser this weekend, just get my clothes in order, and then, uh, yeah, and then we should just, should be about done. Uh, and then I've got, uh, my friend, uh, Julie is going to give me a little couch that she has in storage that she doesn't use, so it's like a little two-seat thing that'll fit nice, so once I have the dresser and that little couch, uh, it should be all, uh, set up there. Justin Clark says, Joe, how do you feel about a meal of the week segment? Something you ate in the past week that you liked or disliked? I tend to eat the same thing over and over, but would like to hear new options. Um, wait, say that one again? Um, how would you feel about doing a meal of the week segment? Uh, something you ate in the past week that you liked or disliked? And then what was the last part of that? Just that he... Eats the same thing over and over, oh. but he wants if he wants to hear new options. Oh, oh, he does. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we basically, I mean, I kind of do that with, like, this is great. I'll give you a good food. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, because I talk so much about food here, so I feel like I'm inadvertently doing that where I kind of give you my best meal of the week or something that I had that kind of surprised me that I didn't like. But, yeah, I mean, we basically do that. But, yeah, I'm going to. I'll always make sure to give you enough food talk here for that. And, yeah, that's, so that's basically like a segment already. Yeah. Uh, BTLT BMX crew. Oh, BT BTLT BMX crew says, give Gary a call on the pod. Your guy's dynamic was gold. Yeah, we will have to check in with Gary again. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, that's a good call. We'll get, we'll get him on, uh, an upcoming episode. Yeah. Uh, Sky God 2000s asks, Joe, what is your opinion on charcuterie? Personally, big fan. One of my favorite things to snack on. Yeah, I'm a fan. I love a nice charcuterie. Yeah, if if that's at a party, I'm I'm all about it. Yeah, I can get a little overboard with those. Like, if 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 I'm really hungry and I show up and all there is a charcuterie, 
uh, there might not be town. much. There might not be much left for everyone else. So. <laughs> I can find myself just not even knowingly walking up to that thing and taking a lot of stuff off of it. Yeah, I mean, just small little things. Yeah, just yeah, should suddenly I, devouring it. Should I should I stock up or keep coming back? Because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep coming back is what I've been doing. Yeah, take a little bit. Go away, come back. Yeah, that's the way to go. <laughs> All right. Jay's main, I assume that's how you say this. Uh, he says, is sour cream on chili weird? It slaps, especially with some avocado in there as well. Uh, no, actually, sour cream on chili I've had, and that is great. There you go. Yeah, I haven't had avocado in chili, but... Sour like, cream for sure. Yeah, anything that's kind of tomatoey and kind of spicy, sour cream goes good with. Yeah. I feel, I've just, my own opinion. Uh, last comment, Lucas DeRazio. Uh, a cockroach that big, he's referring to the one you found in your apartment. Um, a cockroach that big sounds more like a Joe's cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's, Joe's cockroach. I That's like that. Said, yeah. Good call, Lucas. Yeah, um, it was uh, it was a big one. Yeah. And he says, Joe, what was your favorite dish at your Super Bowl viewing this year? Yeah, actually, I I was at a Super Bowl party at the Comedy Store where a lot of the staff, we, yeah, everyone brought food. There was a ton of food there. Uh, yeah, my favorite dish. Let's see. Man, yeah, there were some good dishes, but let's see. My favorite one that I had, there were some really good jalapeno poppers that uh, my friend Alex, who I work with, made. Um, it was, uh, yeah, he made, like, and they were, like, bacon-wrapped jalapeno poppers. He had, like, oh. he cut, like, the fresh jalapeno... So he had like the the half of the jalapeno or whatever, then put cream cheese in it, uh, and then it was wrapped in bacon. It was like, wow. yeah, it was amazing. So those were, yeah, those were pretty memorable. Um, yeah, that was Al Alex Young because there's two Alexes. If they listen to this, and there's like, oh, which Alex were you talking about? Yeah, Alex Young. Those were yeah, those were great. Yeah, there was a lot of good snacks there. I myself brought chocolate chip cookies. I bought a bunch of chocolate chip cookies from nice. Bristol Farms that were great. Nice. But yeah, a lot of good food. But yeah, those those poppers stick out in my mind. I remember I was like, wow, these are great. This is something unique with the bacon. That was a that was a fun little dish. Yeah, we had um I made brats. Ooh. Um and I forgot, I mean, bought them so long ago, I forgot they had cheddar in them. And that was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I like, but yeah, that's good when the cheddar's inside. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Did you, uh, did you do, uh, did you bathe them in beer or, uh? No, I just no. boiled them and then fried them. Nice. Mm. Yeah, I love a good brat. Johnsonville? I don't, I don't remember what brand they were. Okay, yeah, I... Man, yeah, brats are so good. I haven't had those in ages. Love me a brat. Um, all right, is that... Uh, yeah, that's it for comments. That's We're, it for the uh, comments. All right, yeah, another uh, cold night here. Might might get me a nice uh, hot chocolate on the way home or a hot vanilla. Aaron, you ever, have you ever had a hot vanilla? Uh, no, I have not. Yeah, it's like a ch hot chocolate, but it's vanilla. Coffee bean makes it. Um, it's so delicious. If you oh, wait, if, if I, have, I have one comment off of the uh, hot off the press. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> Chad Kroger, fifty three oh seven. Uh, it's not it's not our Chad. Oh, all right. Uh, he's got a Rams helmet in his profile. Exposed brick and cockroaches sounds awesome. So he's being sarcastic. Oh my uh, my apartment. Yeah. yeah. No, the exposed brick is like a fun look, I was told. Sure. It is cool. And then it's like, uh, no, the cockroach was, that was my fault because I, as I explained, I screwed the shower head off 
while the water was running, and that's when he showed up. So, um, and that's where cockroaches live by the water. Yeah. Right. They live in your pipes, bro. In your pipes, yeah. Yeah. So, but no, it's all good. It's not literally going to be like the MTV film from the 90s, Joe's Apartment in Joe's Apartment. Yeah, it's not going to be... He's surrounded by cockroaches. Yeah, we're not going to have that. Sing and dance. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's sing and dance. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to have that. Um, it'll be a different type of Joe's Apartment. So, but yeah, uh, that's it. We'll wrap it up. Yeah, it may get me, uh, yeah, try hot vanilla if you have Hot it. vanilla, okay. Because hot chocolate is great, but yeah, hot yeah. vanilla, if you're into vanilla, I, I recommend it. I, yeah, because I don't know who else makes it. Just coffee, bean, and tea leaf? Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's delicious, so. All right, everybody. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, please... Uh, Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for downloading and listening and uh, loving to see uh, the comments every week and the emails. Guys, keep them coming. Uh, it's a pleasure, as always, doing Joe Code Podcast. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'm Joe Marisi.